Tommy Yankee Man, his first. That's the first team foul on the Vaqueros. We welcome in our audience joining us on FS1 tonight. We are in Omaha, Nebraska from the CHI Health Center with Nick Baugh. I'm Wayne Randazzo, and it's number 15 Creighton's opening night as they play the boys from Texas Rio Grande Valley, the Vaqueros, who were in Lincoln the other day, lost to Nebraska, as Nick had mentioned just a little bit ago. It was a close game until late. And now a couple of threes early as Creighton falling behind in the early few minutes here. Cochran has scored them all for the Blue Jays, and he adds two more. Just keep going to Kalkbrenner. No double teams coming, no dig is even coming. So Kalkbrenner can take all the time he wants to get close to the basket and work that jump hook. And why even bother with the other guys right now? <laughs> Six points for wow. Kalkbrenner, but the threes falling for the Vaqueros, and it's Abdul Hakim again. Abdul Hakim was 0 for 4 from 3 against Nebraska, but he made 16 a year ago, so he's capable. Jemiah Neal was open, but couldn't get it to go. Miller on the rebound, and a second chance for Creighton. It's Ashworth for 3. And that one too strong as well as Abdul Hakim skies for the rebound. Interesting to see if Creighton continues to dare Abdul Hakim to knock down shots. Culkin are kind of creeping out there a little bit. Hockbrenner trying to get his hand up on that one as Abdul Hakim misses wide of the mark. Six foot eight. He pales in size to the big man Cockbrenner. Thank you, Ak comes over for defense. Cockbrenner with six points early. And he just drives through again. If no double or dig or anything's coming, you just got to continue to go right back to Cochran. He has scored all eight, but the threes continue for the Vaqueros. This is going to be their M.O. all year. D.K. Thorne can shoot it. He made three threes at Nebraska on Monday night. We have a foul underneath the basket. Ashworth absorbing some contact. Thank you, Ash, is on the other end. As we get to our 16-minute timeout here in the first half. Well, UTRGV has dropped the threes early on. They've outscored Cochrane and the Blue Jays in the first four minutes. Fourteen of them. So it's not too surprising to see seven already up, seven of their eight field goal attempts from beyond the arc. But that four for four is Mr. Kalkbrenner going to work in the interior for the Blue Jays. So right now, exchanging threes for twos, we'll see what prevails over the course of 40 minutes. But through the first four minutes, strictly one-on-one -on -one in the post against Kalkbrenner has really, really been a good place to continue to go with the basketball. He's getting a chat with Coach McDermott right now, but you'd imagine if you're UTRGV, you probably got to come with some sort of adjustment to come with a double team of some kind. Yeah, they're trading dimes for nickels right now, yeah. and that's not a way to get rich. You know, ask not. Warren Buffett about that around here. Ashworth at the free throw line for Creighton. As we see Cahill Finnell, he is the Vaqueros head coach, and he made his head coaching debut in Lincoln the other night. Again, was a BYU assistant, and BYU a year ago Loved the three ball. They led the country in three-point field goal attempts at 32 threes a game. So he's bringing that same sort of mindset for the Vaqueros in the early going in Omaha. Good start for UTRGV. As they try a two, and that didn't work out so well. They <laughs> should probably go back for the three. Here's Cockbrenner is trying to keep it in bounds. And he's fouled there along the sideline by... Destromo. Destromo somewhat bailed him out. It looked like Kalkbrenner was in trouble. Team foul against the Vaqueros. Creighton's never lost a season opener against Greg McDermott, who has 325 wins at school. He's two off Dana Altman's all time record for victories by a head men's basketball coach here. As Abdul Hakim gets that rebound, and I think it's foul. That will be on Miller. Talk to Greg McDermott about that record. And, you know, it, it was, uh, I guess, in some ways a time for reflection. It's hard to believe for him that it's been now 15 seasons that he has been at the helm here at Creighton. Started in the Valley, navigated his way through the Big East, and has done it magically. This has been the golden era. A couple of Sweet 16s and an Elite Eight in the last four seasons here in Omaha. And spin back in a basket for Abdul Hakim. Start for Abdul Hakim. Average 13 points per game a year ago. Showing his versatility, knocking down a couple of threes. That's a nice drive and a mid-range. Oh. 
Hochbrenner has scored eight of the first ten. He's made all the field goals so far. They swing it out with a three in the corner for Isaac Trout, the sophomore. And that's what he does. He may be 6'10", but 82% of his field goal attempts are threes. Can really shoot it from beyond the arc. And he does well here. He made 51% of his threes in this building last season. Blue Jays get their first three of the game. This is Cliff Davis on his way into the paint looking for some help. Shot clock at five for the Vaqueros. It's Trey Miller making a move. Turnaround jumper with hands in his face. And it's Ashworth who gets the rebound. See, Kalkbrenner was playing free safety. He came over and contested it as well. The drive inside, Ashworth falls short and foul on the other end as Ashworth ends up on the deck. Okay, everything starts, Wayne, with the post-touch to Kalkbrenner. He kicks it to the opposite side of the floor in a quick swing, and you got a six-foot-ten guy that can shoot up over the top of the defense, and he drills it. Isaac Trout, redshirted a year at Virginia, transferred to Creighton. He was the 2022 Nebraska Gatorade Player of the Year, played at Grand Island, Nebraska. And he's worked hard on his body. Trying to get a little bit more laterally quick, but the one thing he can do is shoot it. During the game for Creighton is Shane Thomas as Miller has a seat. It's Ashworth, a good free throw shooter at the line. He shot 91% at the free throw line last year. You see Trout make the three. Creighton bidding for the lead. Ashworth at the free throw line, and there it is. Pop Isaac's out tonight. Shane Thomas, though. Redshirt freshman walk-on getting early minutes here. Number 12 in white. Strong, steady, and solid is Thomas. Thomas a redshirt last year as the rebound and the follow-up rolls through for Trey Miller. An athletic play on the offensive glass. Well, the Carrolls will attack the offensive glass. That was the other area Creighton was worried about. Three from Ashworth the short. Cochrane tips the rebound into his own hands. Brenner is just a massive person. He found an open teammate, and there's the dunk for Shane Thomas. Great movement. And how about Shane Thomas? Two foot, just vertical hop up there. Dunk it. Pretty good athlete is Shane Thomas. Well, they say he's got a 43-inch vertical, so he put it to test there. And had no issues on that dunk after the feed from Cochran. Creighton's on the move again. Here's Jemai Neal. Down low to the big man. Out it goes to Trout. The three. It's good. Pretty good touch pass from Kalkbrenner, but again, six foot ten, quick release. Trout two for two from the corner. Miller gets fouled, and he'll be at the free throw line. Shane Thomas, again, redshirt freshman walk on, a lot of movement. You fall asleep and you leave Thomas underneath for the easy one. Always good to get settled in early for your first action at the college level. And then Trout, just a gorgeous looking jumper from the corner. It's a 10 to 2 run for Creighton. It's your first game. When you're a team that has serious aspirations, what kind of things do you want to see come together? Uh, I, the big thing is. Try to limit your unforced errors. I mean, offensively, you're breaking in a lot of new pieces right now. And a lot of pieces, you look at Shane Thomas, never played a college game. Jemiah Neal, this is his first game at Creighton. Isaac Trout and Mason Miller having to slide over and play on the wing a little bit. So while you're steady at, at Ashworth and Kalkburn at the one and the five, you are kind of breaking in some new pieces. The big thing is just trying to keep things crisp in your execution. And we could see some other collegiate debuts as well from yes. Creighton here tonight. As we are just getting started about seven minutes in. So Frederick King checked into the ball game for the Blue Jays. A little bit of zone from the Vaqueros now. And Neal draws a crowd. The other end, it's Trout. Quick shot. That one's short. Trout made a couple of threes already, but that one didn't go. About drawing a crowd, Howie Fleming was in trouble and he traveled. It's a good job though by Shane Number Thomas to slide his feet, recover, and then not bail the offensive player out with a foul. He stayed solid and steady and forced the turnover. Yeah. 
something that Creighton didn't do a lot of last season, forcing turnovers. Do you expect to see any more of that this year? Not really, to be honest with you. That's just not how Creighton plays. They're, they try to funnel everything to Kalkbrenner, and they don't want to foul. Sometimes if you go for steals, you can foul. But a big part of the program how Creighton wants to do things is to not foul. Generally, they don't turn the ball over much in return, so it's not as if the turnover margin is grossly against them due to the fact that they don't force the issue a lot defensively. But but you're right, for a, a good defensive team, they're, they're towards the bottom in the country in turnovers forced. They really don't necessarily get out in the passing lanes at all. King filling the role of Cockrenner for the moment. Handoff to Ashworth and a three drops for Stephen Ashworth. Quick release from Ashworth who just got more comfortable as the season progressed a year ago and has really had a dynamite offseason. The Caros get it right back. It's Destremo for three. Junior college transfer, another big, knocking one down. Quick action on the other end. It was knocked out of bounds. It will be Creighton Ball after the timeout. Blue Jays trading baskets early with UTRGV opening night. In Looks like so. Looks like they match back up. They might be back in this zone, but when Kalkbrenner's on the floor, you got to continue to try to get him one-on-one -on -one post up touches. Ashworth sure against the double team, and he nearly turned it over trying to get it back. It rolls out toward Trout. Good job by Kalkbrenner to save a turnover. Shot clock at five. Now Thomas, the shot clock at three, makes his move inside. And a kick out with the shot clock winding. Ashworth got the shot off. But missed the long three. Creighton now three for eight behind three point range. Meanwhile, UTRGV five for eight. It's kept them in it here so far despite Cochran scoring eight points right out of the gate. Abdul Hakeem's knocked a couple of those down. Cochran, who of course has had so many blocks over the years, and they kick it out to give. Destremo a chance at three and he makes it. It's his second main three, but that's Kalkbrenner's matchup. He's collapsing in to try to block the shot. Now Kalkbrenner goes down, reaching for that ball to keep it from being a turnover. Barcaros can get the lead back here. Knocked away and it's grabbed by Jason Green. And you see ball handling be a little bit of an issue for the Blue Jays. No Pop Isaacs tonight, so you're having to play some guys a little bit out of position on the wing. And for example, right now, Trout and, and Jason Green, those are two four men that play in the front line. Right now, Jason Green's having to slide to the three. And typically, those guys are not as accustomed to handling the ball. Bob Isaacs, him being out, certainly that void is felt. Hopeful he'll be back on Sunday, but he is out tonight. We talked about more collegiate debuts here tonight. You see number 23, in white for Creighton, that is Jackson McAndrew, who is the top-ranked recruit in the Greg McDermott era. And McAndrew making his debut on the floor right now. Strength is the only issue with him. Other than that, he, he's really a talented guy. Confident, can shoot it. He's going to be a heck of a player here in Omaha. Got a nice hand for a very basketball-educated audience here in Nebraska. McAndrew's three. Falling off the mark, but Cochrane with the rebound and putback will send him to the free throw line. <laughs> Nothing like checking in. First time you touch it, you let it fly. And he sure did. <laughs> he was Mr. Minnesota basketball last year. He's supposedly a marksman from three point range, and he gave it a shot right away. No doubt. And th there's something to also seeing how young players handle an environment. Creighton played Purdue in a charity exhibition game right here. And you're talking about defending Big Ten champs played in the national championship game a year ago. Jackson McAndrew looked comfortable and confident on the floor. And one of the things I like about him, he played in four state championship games and won two. So not only was he talented, he won at a high level. Creighton did win that exhibition game against Purdue for whatever that's worth at that point. And at the end of October, no, Creighton's going to be a solid team this year. We know they're going to be a tournament-worthy team, a team that could make a run once they get there. And it all starts here tonight in Omaha as Creighton makes their move back toward March. And Abdul Hakim off the mark as he was out of control. And the Blue Jays bring it up with Ashworth. 
We've seen a lot from Jemiah Neal here in the first half of this first half. But a send out there from Neal. Green bounces his way inside off the defender. It's travel. You're, you're spot on. And so what of a quiet start for Jemiah Neal. But the biggest thing with, with Jemiah Neal is efficiency and shot selection. He, really talented player, but sometimes can fall in love with taking tough shots. But he is the most athletic Blue Jay. Does a good job getting in the lane. It's all about him being solid. So he has not forced the issue early on, which is good to see. But certainly, he's going to have to put his fingerprints on this game. And some youth on the floor now as McAndrews out there. And so is Ty Davis, a freshman point guard who just entered as well. And a true freshman at that. And as McAndrew is as well. Cockbrenner gets the rebound. Just two freshmen playing together. Plus, Jason Green doesn't have a ton of experience. Playing off the bench last year, averaging seven minutes per game. We have Neal who's been around and the big man Cockbrenner who sails that one through. Knocked down 16 threes a year ago. Certainly that's an area the NBA is wanting to see him step out and shoot it a little bit more. three and a rebound falls in the hands of Ty Davis who runs it up to Neal right away. Andrew finds Cockbrenner. The floater bounces out. It's a good play for McAndrew though. A travel or a double dribble at least called here against Abdul Hakim brings us to the timeout competitive game here early on in Omaha. Well, a moment ago, Wayne, Ryan Kalkrenner knocked down a three, and this is how a lot of his threes unfold. Not necessarily picking pops, but here he is. He's looking for somebody to pass the ball to, and, and it, the team's just back off him, so he turns and rises and fires. So if you're wondering what a lot of the threes will look like, those are more of what Kalkrenner's three-point attempts look like, where he's trying to a dribble handoff, find an open teammate, and then he just turns and lets it rip. Pretty good start, though, for Kalkbrenner here. 12 points, four rebounds, five of six from the field. So Ryan Kalkbrenner, can't even say picking up where he left off last year because he's going to seemingly be an even bigger part of the offense this year. Still average 17 points per game, but the two top scorers from last year are gone. And so is that dunk as Cockbrenner brings that one home. He's roaming that baseline against the zone, and Neal gets a piece of the paint, and that's where Cockbrenner is elite, catching and finishing at the rim. Baylor Shireman, Trey Alexander have moved on to the NBA. Maybe Cockbrenner will as well at some point. He stay behind to lead this Blue Jay team. As that ball falls off the rim, it is run down by Ty Davis. RGB switching back and forth, man zone, trying to front the post. Good job by Kalkbrenner to slow down. He's a foot taller than Aqua. Did not get that one to drop. Great move there. Trey Miller lost his defender and sinks the basket. Big time move. Cockbrenner got locked alone, and he's underneath the basket for the easy layup. I'm not sure how that happens if you're UTRGG off of a made basket. The one guy you've got to make sure you account for. Behind the back move, Abdul Hakim off the glass and through. Wow, back to back big time off the dribble moves from the Vaqueros. You see the offensive talent for the Texas Rio Grande Valley team. It's looking for an upset here tonight. This is Davis with the kick out to Neal. Shot clock at eight. Now down to three, Neal 
Another feed out to Miller who has to force it up. We've seen that a couple of times now from Creighton with one on the shot clock, an extra pass. Cochran are jamming his way inside. Just no answer. Ottawa giving up so much in height and strength. Cockbrenner is just running this team over. He has 18. Well, first of all, the penetration in the lob. That's where Kalkbrenner is really, really difficult and efficient. But, wow. Hassan Abdul Hakim with a big time move over the three time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. But the coach is upset how they're defending the three time Big East Defensive Player of the Year and the preseason Big East Player of the Year. And Ryan Kalkbrenner, who's playing with just such good pace tonight. You see how he's just cool and calm in the post. He's surveying the middle of the floor, reading the defense. Where's the double team coming? If it's not coming, let me take my time, get to my jump hook. For the, they talk about how the game just slows down, and you can see that right now with Kalkbrun. There's a lot more to it than being the biggest guy out there, but it certainly helps to yes. be seven foot one. What are some of the things that he does to enhance that, that height that he has and the size that he has? Well, he's got great hands, and he's got good touch around the rim. And he's fifth all time in field goal percentage in college basketball history. Not at Creighton, all time. And so he's one of the most efficient scorers. And lots of his baskets have come off pick and rolls, but tonight you've seen more straight up post-ups. And that's what I think you might see a little bit more from him in his final campaign here in Omaha. And Abdul Hakim has a three roll out. That's kind of what I mean. A lot of guys have been 7-1 yeah. over the years, but not a lot of guys have shot 66% from the field in their careers. McAndrew from the corner could not get that one to bounce through. Neal was the last to touch it. It's out of bounds. Well, and, and to, to finish your point off, Wayne, take that to the other side. There are a lot of seven-footers that aren't as impactful as he is defensively. So he's able to, to take his length, take his size, and translate it efficiently on offense and defensively. He's just been a master at timing up shots to alter them or block them. And Creighton's entire defensive system is predicated around funneling everything to Culkin. Genkuag who puts up the three. This is going to take many shots long range tonight. That one missed. McAndrew got the rebound. Ty Davis running his way inside. Left hand underneath. Great anticipation from Ty Davis to catch, rip, and go. He could see the defender out of his peripheral vision closing out on him. Genkuag misses. So he got it to roll actually on the second bounce. Genkuag does get the three. Davis showed a lot of burst on that move to the basket. Ashworth with the finger roll through, plus the foul. Look at the anticipation. Jay caught it. He, he knew where he was going to go with it because Gankyweg was flying out at him. A really good feel from Ty Davis. And then Stephen Ashworth seeking out the contact, getting it up on the rim. Fifth year senior who had a baby in the offseason. Looking pretty good there. Ashworth has 10 points now after the three-point play. Second year after coming over from Utah State. They handled the ball well. Talked earlier about the turnovers and the lack of them on the Creighton side. Well, Ashworth's a big reason why. The ball's in his hands. He's not turning it over much. Yeah, he was second in the Big East in assist to turnover ratio in conference play. So he does a nice job taking care of the rock. And his double team, Abdul Hakim, able to skirt around it. Miller steps back with the jumper and connects. Some athleticism on this yeah. team in orange. And some ball handling to go with it. But if you're Creighton, if you're going to trap a ball screen, you cannot allow the offensive player to dribble out of it. Because then you're in a world of, of trouble. Ashworth. There should have been a foul there that wasn't. Not trying to draw one against Miller. Well, either he got the foul the first time or the <laughs> second time. Get it. Well, either way, you know, they give Emmys out for TV, so as we're trying to get in. <laughs> Timeout on the... Out. Creighton's trying to piece things together in that front court. This is a thin group at the guard spot that gets even more thin without Pop Isaac. Isaac's not in there tonight. We'll see if he's able to play in that next game for Creighton, which will be late Sunday afternoon against Fairleigh Dickinson. First handful of games will be here in Omaha. Creighton will 
Start to get busy with Ooh. a non-conference schedule that will certainly test a team that wants to be tested. Yes. And I also think a part of the, the, the tough non-con was to reward a guy like Ryan Kalkbrenner for coming back. A guy like Kalkbrenner comes back, he wants to play in big, high marquee games, and there's going to be plenty of them for the Blue Jays in their non-con slate. Another travel we've seen. Creighton's defense force a few of those here early on from UTRGV. University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. They are in Edinburgh, Texas. In the Rio Grande Valley area. And they're trying to get their basketball program in the right direction. They've left the WAC. They've entered the Southland Conference. Is that one of their best players tonight, too? We've talked about Isaacs being out for Creighton, but J.J. Howard missing for UTRGV. That's a big loss for their offense. Yes, 10 points per game as a freshman. Coming off a torn ACL. His dad is a, a name that Blue Jay fans remember. Jamar Howard was all Missouri Valley Conference. Took on the Blue Jays when Creighton was in the Valley back in the day. And he gets rid of it right before the shot clock went off. And Abdul Hakeem, who along with Howard, were the two top scorers returning from last season. Not a lot of returning players for UTRGV, but Howard is one of them, and so is this man. Abdul Hakeem, who averaged 13 points a game last year with a long arching three he misses. Certainly has cooled off from beyond the arc after he made his first two. And he certainly attempted a lot so far. Cockbrenner underneath the basket, two bodies around him. He just flexed them away. Again, just taking his time in the post. Ten point lead now, the Blue Jays' biggest. 20 points for Cockbrenner, his career high is 31. This is a three in the corner. Thank you, Ag. Actually, that would have been a two. Either way, it was no good, and it will be great basketball. Abdul Hakim has already attempted six threes. That's a career high in three point attempts. It's Greg McDermott inches toward career win number 326. That would put him one behind Dana Altman for the most wins in Creighton history. You know, seven basketball coaches, all basketball coaches will say they don't really care about the personal achievements. Some of them you shouldn't believe. But Greg McDermott, I think that you should, because he really doesn't care about this. You thing. asked him today, he didn't, he, no, I don't <laughs> You know, some other coaches, yeah, you, you can expect them to be putting it in their photo album. Yeah. Not really Greg McDermott, though. He, he is, what he has done here has just been remarkable. To move up from the Valley to the Big East, to navigate that move brilliantly, it really helped to obviously have Doug McDermott and that magical crew in year number one of the Big East to get off to a good start. What you see there, just a couple away from number one all time. That great I don't know if that it's talked about a lot, the, really the fluid progression from one to the other. Dana Altman, who had a nice long career here at Creighton, then McDermott. We're talking about a span of 30 years yeah. now with two coaches. Two coaches, 30 years. At a place like Creighton, continuity matters. And they started with the vision of former athletic director Bruce Rasmussen, but you're exactly right, Wayne. And they've had continuity in droves, and there is Isaac Trout driving one through the basket. Creighton has done a good job, especially with their front line players, getting out and running, getting ahead of the defense, and Ashworth with his eyes up finds Trout for an easy dunk. Miller, he has shown some moves here tonight. Bounces away from Ashworth, gets it over Cockbrenner, but couldn't finish as the big man made it very difficult. That's it. That, that won't go down as a stat, as a block, but that is an altered shot right there from Ryan Cockbrenner. Trout again, a three in the corner. No good. Rebound bounces long, and it's tracked down by UTRGV. And after shedding the defender, it's a missed three from DK Thorne, who made a couple earlier. out of a minute to play here in the first half. It's been a good one for the Blue Jays' offense. They put up 46. Cockbrenner has 20 of those. Ball in his hands here. He's saying, get out of the way. Give me some room. <laughs> a spin toward the basket as he bullies his way. But that one cost him a travel. I think that's the right call. Just slid his feet a little bit. We've talked about the Blue Jays getting out and running. Trout get behind the defense. Good catch in traffic. Pivot and go up top and slam it. Good first half. One of the better halves Trout's played as a Blue Jay. 
draft, getting a chance to spread out a little bit as a sophomore. Did a couple of starts last year. Played in most games for Creighton. Take inside, a foul called on Davis, and the basket will count. It was Cliff Davis who got the two points. Ty Davis commits the foul. Not a drive from Cliff Davis. Known as a three-point shooter, made 92 threes a year ago, but looked pretty good putting his head down and getting to the basket. Three-point chance here for Cliff Davis at the line. Davis had 12 points in the game against Nebraska the other night. Four threes made in that game. He had 10 threes in a game last year, so he, he is a, a good shooter. He's a great shooter. He was at Northwestern State a year ago making all those threes. As he cuts the Creighton lead to eight into the final moments here of the first half. Clock winding down. Miller for three at the buzzer off the mark. And that's how the first half ends here in Omaha. Both teams shooting from three-point range a lot. Carroll's made eight threes in the first half, and it's kept him close. Baylor Shireman, who had 20 and a half last year against the Cornhuskers. Career high for Cockrenners, 31, so he can close in on that soon. Gankuak misses the three, and there is some contact after that. Ashworth rolls around to the deck of Miller. Trey Miller for a point one really crashes the offensive glass. In the first half, he was flying in there. Had an offensive rebound put back there. He forced a foul on Ryan in there. Had an offensive rebound put back there. He forced a foul on Stephen Ashworth. It's two fouls on Ashworth. Stephen Ashworth. It's two fouls on Ashworth. At the free throw line himself, plenty. Yes, he was. In the first half. It out after a double team. It's an open look at a three for Cliff Davis. Excellent kick out pass from Abdul Hakim. Ninth made three for the Vaqueros. You mentioned Davis scored a bunch last year from three point range. Down low, Cook Brenner with the jam. Perfect execution. Well, high low, Jason Green flashes. Kalkbrenner works his guy up the floor. 22 points now for Kalkbrenner. This one rolls off the rim into the hands of Miller with the rebound. Green the seven point lead. Not as comfortable as they thought it might be here tonight. But without Pop Isaacs, this is kind of the, the game I expected. Texas Tech transfer, not playing tonight, a little banged up. You lose a lot in Trey Alexander and Baylor Shireman on the wing. Cockrenner with the hook shot. A little baby hook over Kankuak. 24 and counting for the seven foot one center. I get how it's a pick your poison defensively where you say, okay, you don't want to give up threes, but you're just you're getting shred by Cockrenner in the post. That one drops through for DK Thorne. And again, UTRGV staying close despite the dominance of Cockrenner. There's Gankuak with a Cockrenner like stop. Abdul Hakim the drive to the basket. He gets two plus the foul. And the Vaqueros are storming through to start the second half. Son Abdul Hakim at six foot eight. Doing a nice job handling the ball. First, look at this high low, just perfect execution. Gets Gankuik, worked up the floor. Green flashes, but look at this, six foot eight. Just under control, reading the defense. Long steps into the body of Jason Green, big time. Finish for Hassan Abdul Hakim, who's had a really impressive night. 12 points, six rebounds, four assists. He had a couple of threes early in the game. He does not get the three point play as Miller rebounds the missed free throw. Maya Neal trying to get on the board instead looked to kick it out and it was literally kick kicked ball. out of bounds. Neal 0 for 2 in the first half. The Arizona State transfer average 11 a game. 11 points a game for the Sun Devils a year ago. And there's Pop Isaacs having to sit and watch. Up top, Green was fouled. 
Mr. Creighton trying to get on the board as well. The starters for Creighton have not scored. Green, Neal, and Miller all zeros so far. So again, that's like Jason Green kind of having to play out of position. He's usually playing at the four. He's having to play at, uh, at the three. The Blue Jays again shorthanded at that guard spot. The roster did a little thin there, and then without Pop Isaacs, they get real thin in a hurry. Greg McDermott, he, he has a surplus of good players at that four spot. Jason Green, Mason Miller, Isaac Trout, Jackson McAndrew. Can I find a way? Those are four of your better players. You're going to have to play them at different positions because you've got to try to get those four guys all on the floor. It's to be a certain uneasiness if you're a coach for a team with high expectations in the early stages of the year. You're still kind of learning about your own team as you go along. There's a block shot for Cochraner, his 20th consecutive game with a block shot. And on there is Jemiah Neal to get on the scoreboard, plus draw the foul. How electric and athletic was that? That takes some skill and some ability to be able to be running full speed catch it, step through in traffic, and put it up softly off the window. That is a difficult shot from a big time athlete in Jemiah Neal. And the foul was on Miller. Genkuag was the one who had the foul. So Genkuag gets his third. And it's a three point play for Creighton. This three point opportunity for a missed free throw by Neal. Cockburner gets the rebound. An eight point lead again. There's Neal under the basket again. This time, though, some traffic, and it's Miller who comes away with it. Vaquero's on the move. Miller drops it off. It's a three. It's no good. Ashworth scrambles for the rebound. Green, that ball was right into the back of Cliff Davis, so Green couldn't come up with it. along the baseline around Cochran on a good move by Abdul Hakim. Having a hard time guarding Abdul Hakim off the bounce, but nice job using the rim to shield off Cochran and going to the reverse. Abdul Hakim, the only Vaquero in double figures. Ashworth has 17 for Creighton after that three. The big time escape dribble to free himself up for the three off the bounce. It's a big time shooter in Steven Ashworth. Back to a nine-point lead. So Creighton trying to keep it comfortable here at least. Another three for the Vaqueros. Destromo does another one. Just hanging around and hanging around. It's three threes from Marshall Destromo, the Australian native. Jemiah Neal able to get underneath the basket and score. Now, Jemiah Neal should have a lot of real estate when he drives because of the shooters on the perimeter. So you don't want to step off. He just needs to take his time, find those driving seams, and hit them. Abdul Hakim has found some baskets underneath. Gets his own rebound here after a miss. Barrow's trying to work it around after a fresh shot clock. See a foul called here, and it's a block foul called against Ashwood. That's three of Steve Ashwood. Brown wanted a charge, and so did Greg McDermott. A timeout after the foul was called against Creighton. Points in the first half, including a couple of threes. He's out there right now. As Ashworth was called for his third foul right before the timeout. Something to watch. Ashworth cannot pick up that fourth foul. He's on the bench right now. The rebound is picked up and into the hands of Destromo. Fleming turns it into the backcourt. And there will be Creighton balls that rolls all the way out of bounds. So now we Fleming, one of the five returning players for UTRGV, is expected to be a big part of this group. Yeah. Something that's been big tonight for UTRGV is not only the made threes, but they've made it from their big guys. Six of their ten made threes are from their fours and fives. This is Trout mentioned him earlier, hitting a couple. Hawkbrenner with the offensive rebound and the easy putback. 26. 
He has tied a career high with 12 made field goals. 12 of 14 from the floor. Career high in points is 31. It came in an NCAA tournament game against NC State. Foul is called here. Creighton called for its fourth foul of this second half already. Let's see if that comes into play later. One of the things early on as a freshman is the game's moving quick, and when the game moves quick, sometimes you foul. And so Ty Davis, first game as a true freshman, talented one, four-star guard from Alabama. Just gets Her line is Miller. Came from Southern Illinois. Houston originally impressive with his athleticism here in this yeah. one tonight. And he, Ten points per game two years ago at Incarnate Word, but really didn't play very much at Southern Illinois last year. And so he's he's getting his confidence back. Just getting on the floor. Trying to heat up the freshman Ty Davis here. He's a starter at Incarnate Word at 28 starts a couple of years ago. This is Davis, the freshman, as he sends it out to Trout. It's worked with Kochbrenner inside tonight. Destermo battles him for that pass. Shot clock at five. Some separation, and the left hand drops. Incredible. Great catch. Again, I I'm going to keep on saying it. He's just taking his time, isn't he? He's just under control. He's not getting sped up, even bobbling a catch. He's totally playing at his speed right now. 28 points as he nears a career high. And another somewhat unforced error by the Vaqueros. We've seen a couple of those in the last few minutes. Just watch. Bobble the catch. No problem. Look. Okay, no help. No help. All right, let's get to the jump hook. Boom. He's in quite the flow. And it's a huge reason for Creighton's success tonight. 13 of 15 from the field. 28 points. As he closes in on a new career high. And we'll lead him out there with a 10-point lead here to put this one away. And there he goes for 30. Well, that's a big-time play, though, from Jemiah Neal. That was amazing for number five in white. A 30-point night for Kalkbrenner. And the Blue Jays have opened up a 12-point. Creighton has shot 60% from the field overall in this game. Of course, it helps when your best player is about 87 or 88% <laughs> yeah. by himself. Kalkbrenner with 30. His next basket would give him a career high. And there's still 13 and a half minutes left here. Davis got loose under the basket. And he gets two behind Miller. Heck of a pass from Gankuag. Gankuag right now has to be the one to guard. Kalkbrenner on his 30-point effort. It's like a, a zone from UTRGV. Bounce pass to Trout. Three in the corner. Isaac Trout, his third tonight. All three of his threes from that corner. It's half of the made threes for Creighton. Gankuak for three. You mentioned the big man for UTRGV behind the arc. They've been successful. Seven of the 11 made threes have been from the front line players, the bigs for UTRGV. Thank you, Ed, making that last one. He's hit a couple of them. The Destromo, the 6 for 9 Australian, has three. Double team on Cochran. About time. <laughs> Jemaya Neal with the shot clock winding. Step back three, Davis. Too strong, and it's Cliff Davis with the rebound. I thought Trout could have maybe just gone up with that. Six foot ten, clock winding down. A little bit of a screen set up by Gankuak. Left Davis with a good look, but it rimmed out. And Ty Davis really moves around pretty well. Cockbrenner with a little spin, got around Gankuag. And a foul is called. As Cockbrenner will go to the free throw line with a chance to pop up a new career high in points. We'll have a timeout before that happens. Pops, and so you have to understand, 
what your man's trying to do. And, and don't start to cheat the roll. you got to make sure you're pressed out under that three-point line because we pointed out, Wayne, a lot of threes have come from the bigs from UTRGV. They've made 11 overall in this game. They've actually shot 46% from three-point range. They were successful from three-point range against Nebraska, but not nearly as efficient as they've been tonight. Yeah, against Nebraska, 41 three-point attempts. They made th three-point attempts. They made 13 in that game. Caros were 6 and 25 last year. I don't even think about that because 6 and 25 last year. I don't even think about that because of a whole new roster mostly. Cockbrenner now with 1,802 career points after that free throw. He has 1,802 career points after that free throw. He has Pat Weir High. 32 points for Cockbrenner here tonight. And looking up in the rafters, I see Corver's jersey hanging. I think there might be a talk runner jersey just heading that way here. Yeah. As Doug McDermott's number three is next to Corver's 25 here at CHI Health Center. On the free throw line, it's a jumper off the mark. Thorne tried to follow it in but couldn't get the rebound. And now the ball out of bounds off Creighton. Pretty good stretch here of managing things when Steven Asher picked up his third foul. He's still set at the, at the scores table. Taking a look at it as Ty Davis lost his balance. Wow, somehow that ball, I don't know how, how that ball not touch. DK Thorne. If you did that 100 times, you'd probably hit him 99. That was the one that didn't. The recovery from Neal. He's had a sizable lead for most of this second half. Quite put it away though. And the with a few turnovers here in the second half helping out as Ashworth is about to come back in after reporting his third foul a handful of minutes ago. There's Corver's number 25. There's one in the rafters here and there's one on the floor. That's part of the new court design here at CHI Health Center where the retired numbers are on the floor as well in front of the benches. You can see it in front of the Vaquero bench there higher numbers and the smaller numbers on the other side in front of Creighton. A neat little wrinkle with the new court design this year for the Blue Jays. Hawkbrenner was fouled as he tried to dunk it. So get another chance at the line. Steven Astor was arguing and I, I, I think he might be right that UTR to blocked that shot through the rim. Take another look at it. That is a 14 foul. Uh, I guess he got him outside of the rim. Didn't look like it. A good angle here. Yes. It, I, I was with Stephen Ashworth. I thought in real time it looked like he locked it with his hand going through the, the rim. The officials will take a look at it, but after what we just saw, it'll be pretty obvious to Lamar Simpson here what's going on. Well, we're talking about the retired jerseys. I mean, it might feel like hyperbole to already talk about a guy getting his jersey retired, but I mean, he, he's Kulkbrenner. Is putting together one of the most decorated careers in, in this program's history. He's going to surpass 2,000 career points this year. He'll be just the fourth Blue Jay to ever do that. Looks like more than just whether that dunk went through or not. Some contact on the face yeah, as well. Hit. So as the officials think about the possibility of flagrant foul but you bring it up 2,000 points he's a three-time Big East defensive player of the year you, you'd imagine he'll get a fourth that'll him and Patrick Ewing are the only players to ever have would, would be able to say that at this point it's just it's Kalk Renner Alonzo Mourning and Patrick Ewing for <laughs> three that's pretty good yeah, company, it's already right? good company <laughs> yeah. whether he gets the fourth one or not and the, the, the other thing most NCAA tournament wins in Creighton history 11 Ryan Kalk Renner. He's got 11 in San Antonio. review is two shots. Creighton has had four straight years in which they've won a tournament game. And they've made it to the Sweet 16 in three of the last four. Now, oh, so close to the final four a couple of years ago. And that is certainly the goal for this Creighton roster that believes that they could contend with anybody in the country. And they'll certainly have a chance to prove that even before Big East play begins. 
They have to play Kansas and Alabama in December. Number one and number two in the preseason AP poll. Alabama coming off a Final Four appearance. Alfred already a career high. Now 33 points tonight. What a debut. And take a look at that. His non-conference schedule is daunting. Kansas, Alabama, Alabama on the road. KU will come to Omaha. State. He's got Nebraska, the in-state rival, coming to Omaha this year. So the Blue Jays is going to be tested. Three from the top of the key is it misses for Destrimo. I don't know that it does a team that really has the kind of aspirations Creighton does any good to not play a schedule like that. Yeah. Jemiah Neal misses the three. He might suffer a few losses along the way, but I feel like it will really help when you get down into conference play in the stretch run. Abdul Hakeem's had a good night, 16 points. Ashworth, quick shot off the feed. Misses and rebound for Fleming as TRGV tries to make a late push midway through the second half. Well, they've shot the three, Wayne. A 12-point lead can get erased in a hurry. Rebound for Fleming as he keeps it alive for the Vaqueros. Fleming, the bounce feed down low. Destremo can't get it to go. And Andrew's the one who fights for the rebound. So we can slow it down, throw it into Kaufbrenner. That's the plan, and it works perfectly. Kaufbrenner with the dunk on another alley-oop pass. It's a great play for Ashworth, because that's typically where Kaufbrenner scores a lot of his points. He's great finishing, rolling to the basket. He's 36 tonight on 15 of 17 shooting. Now is called here. It's against Davis, the freshman. The last Blue Jay to get that many points in a game was Mitch Ballack. He had 39 in a game in 2019 against DePaul. Taking a look at this. This is Staple of Creighton's offense. The pick roll lob with Kalkbrenner. I dig a little bit for the last 40-point game by a Blue Jay. There's Mitch Ballard on staff. If I'm not mistaken, he made 11 threes in that effort that night for the 30 burger that Mitch Ballard had. But Cochran will take a breather now. You'd have to imagine the last 40 point game had to be Doug McDermott. 40 points last done by McDermott. He had 45 in a game against Providence yeah. in March of 2014. Been know, over 10 years since the Blue Jays had 40 in a game. Huckbrenner could get there here tonight. He's on the bench right now with nine minutes to go. Important minute here without Huckbrenner. 13 point lead. Jemiah Neal lost the defender but also lost the ball. Stop and pop three. Davis can't get it to drop. This is a rebound after the long bounce. Abdul Akeem goes underneath the defense for two. Andrew's got to have a little bit better discipline, not fight on that shot fake, because that gives Abdul Hakeem the head of steam to get to the basket. Now he gets a steal. Two against one. Abdul Hakeem sheds the defense, drops two, gets the foul. Ooh, Hakeem has been outstanding. Nine rebounds. He's got 23 points. He's long. And I've just been impressed with his ability to handle the ball. Those long strides at the end of his attacks to the rim. He's huffing and puffing because he is playing hard. And I said it. This is where a really important stretch here. Is Kalkbrenner getting a breather? Second, he goes to the bench. Four straight points, chance for five here in a crucial stretch of the game. And what it's going to look like down the stretch. 22 points for Abdul Hakeem. That's a new career high for him. He had 21 in the game last year against Grand Canyon. 
the Toronto native Hassan Abdul Hakim has come here to Omaha and has had a huge night 22 points, nine rebounds, and four assists, a couple steals. And now he'll take a breather as well. His team's best player is sitting at the moment, and it's an eight point lead against Creighton. King gets stripped. On the fast break, it's Thorne to the basket for two. Creighton calls timeout. Cockbrenner gets ready to check in as the Blue Jays' lead shrinks in a moment's notice. Creighton up by six. The Vaqueros squeeze here in Omaha. To dominate the way that he has tonight, scoring 36. A new career high has really ripped well past his career high, which had been 31. And there he goes, drawing the double team. Jemiah Neal cut toward the basket. Neal slips around and drops two. The good cut off the double team and under control drive from Jemiah Neal. Great lead is back to eight. That's what it was at halftime. The Caros have knocked down some threes tonight. There's another chance and it goes for Thorne. Got to close the airspace. He's UTRGV guys are confident from beyond the arc, and DK Thorne drilled a big one. He won six games last year, but they have really revamped their roster with a new head coach. And they have made the three point shot their best friend. They're only down five. Miller left it short. Cockbrenner fighting for the rebound, just bigger than everybody else. Cockbrenner should have gone back up with it after the defense vacated. Neal tries to get it to him, and a grab by Destremo will draw the foul. Well, one of the common narratives in, in basketball is post-entry passing is kind of a lost art, and I think it's right. I think a lot of times the ball goes into the post, it's pick and rolls. But he's Up top, it's Cochran who drops it right in. How about that play? <laughs> Throw it up, let your man go get it. Get up and go get it play. And how about that shot from Thorne over the seven foot one Hawk printer? Hawk printer has 38. Over 10 years since the Blue Jay has scored 40. Of course, that was Doug McDermott then. Ashworth off the handoff. All eyes on the big man here. Ash Ashworth looking to slip by. It's Cockbrenner, it's a three, and it's 41 for the big man. What a performance by Ryan Cockbrenner on opening night. And all Coach Fennell could do was laugh, just laugh. Ashworth feeds it up ahead to Neal. Clayton trying to slow it down. Green inside. Two punch the foul. Well, again, Ryan Kalkbrenner made 16 threes last year. He's not going to take a bunch of them, but these wide open standstill ones in the flow of the offense, he will rise and fire. And he is on fire tonight. And then a great basket cut from Jason Green and Jemiah Neal with an on-time, on-target delivery. And the Blue Jays trying to stretch this lead back out. Surprised the net hasn't just disintegrated <laughs> like an NBA jam with the way Kalkbrenner has played tonight. 17 of 19. This has been surgical for Ryan Kalkbrenner. 10 rebounds if you're keeping track of the double-double. 41 has been the story. It's his 17th career double-double. He's the first Blue Jay to score 40 in a game since... There's a block for Kalkbrenner. What can he do? Miller on the other end. And hit the bottom of the backboard and... Landed with a Vaquero. Now it's a three. It's Thorne missing the mark. Miller rebounds. Thorne right back inside sends it out. Three Davis, that's good from the top. And the Vaqueros won't go away. And they cut it back to eight with 5.16 to play. And 
You have to give credit to Cahill Fidel's team here tonight. For sure. And withstanding Frank Hawkbrenner's most dominant offensive performance in his career and still right there. And Greg McDermott irate with his group, not understanding personnel. Cliff Davis made 93 threes a year ago. You have to understand that he's got in the gym range and you can't let him just rise up and knock one down. They've needed every bit of Kalkbrenner's big night here. The threes have dropped for UTRGV. Kalkbrenner's dominant performance is really front and center for why Creighton even has the lead in this game. Absolutely. This has not been you know, empty calories of 41 points. Creighton has needed all of it. No Pop Isaacs tonight. Out with an injury. You're gonna, you're gonna need a big offensive performance from Paul Printer. He needed everything that guy's got. See how much gas he's got in the tank in the final five minutes. 21 points for Ryan Kalkbrenner tonight. Not necessarily gonna always be like this, especially when Isaacs returns from his injury, which should be soon. And when he is needed to tonight, Kalkbrenner has certainly carried this team. More zone here from UTRGV. Eight point lead with five minutes left. That ball tipped out of bounds. And Creighton will keep possession with 12 on the shot clock. Bill Hakeem got his hand on it. Creighton debuted tonight. Steps back into that jumper. Abdul Hakim gets the rebound. A good night for Abdul Hakim on his own side. Battling with Green. Looking for space. Left hand and it shines again for Abdul Hakim. And usually Kalkbrenner comes and cleans that up. A good step through from Abdul Hakim. Yes, six. There is a three from Ashworth. No good. Cochran a rebound, put back, and he scores again. He might have to have 50 tonight. 43 is the number now. Still four minutes to go. He's going to isolate Abdul Hakim if I'm UTRGV. Let him go to work. The eighth highest single game total in Creighton history. The record's 51. Davis has made some threes. Steps back, tries to draw contact, but he makes the three with Kalkbrenner in his face. Incredibly tough shot with seven foot one Kalkbrenner contesting it. But I don't know how the Jays vacated away from him and gave him an open look. 14 threes, they've hit nearly 50% from three point range. It's an opening night battle for Creighton. They lead by five. Here's Neal, stripped away. He loses it, but it's out of bounds, and it will stay with Creighton. Now this is turning into a more furious finish than may be expected. Creighton tested at home. Season. Don't forget Cliff Davis has 17. DK Torn has 15. So UTRGV has been able to score, especially from three-point range tonight, where they've shot close to 50%. Powell was called on the inbound and it was Gankuran who has now five fouls so he is fouled out. Excellent creativity on that out of bounds play again. Just Kalkbrenner wedging him in front of the rim and just throw it up to him. And he's got such a size advantage. He's got great hands. And now he'll be back at the free throw line. It's still early in the season obviously here in the first week but there have been some games and no one's had a 43-point game yet until Kalkbrenner tonight, now 44. Awesome. Some offense-defense subs here to try and get a little bit smaller to be able to switch and press out on the three-point line. Ty Davis, the true freshman in for Isaac Trout. 326 left. Creighton's lead is 7 Hawkbrenner has 45 points tonight. 18 of 20 from the field. 7 of 8 now the free throw line. 
Although it is a fairly perilous lead. And a three from Davis. A wild release from Davis trying to draw a foul as well. Now a three in the corner. It's Thorne. That's off the mark. They try it again. Thorne wiggles. Leaves it too long. Miller the rebound. A fourth try for the Vaqueros. It's Thorne. Another miss. Another offensive rebound. Abdul Hakim finally ends the possession with points for the Vaqueros. What an amazing display of effort from UTRGV. That possession was a five headed monster. Five tries, and it's a five point game. Brayton could use a basket here. And where to? Kochbrenner, more for the big man. He has 47. Over three vaqueros. But it doesn't matter. They work it around the perimeter. It's Davis. Rebound grabbed by the freshman Ty Davis. A man's rebound for a young freshman in Ty Davis. Where do you think this ball should go? <laughs> Just throw it up to him. He has 47. It is tied for the second most in program history. The record is 51. Held by Bob Portman in 1967. Kochbrenner. It's been his night. Unforgettable. 49 for Ryan Kochbrenner. Center rises for the seven foot one center who has put on the ultimate show in this one. No! 20 of 22 from the floor. 49 points. Just throwing it up, he's able to high point it and then keep it high so the defense can't come and get it. And he has just been incredible all night. No answer. Doesn't matter if there's three guys draped on him, two. He has just gotten to his spots. He is exhausted, but just an incredible performance from Ryan Kalkbrenner. Now the long history of this program talking over a hundred years there has never been a Blue Jay that has had 20 made field goals in a game Ryan Kalkbrenner has set that record here tonight he still has a chance for the all-time Creighton record for points scored in a game. Mentioned Bob Portman in 1967 had a 51 point game against UW Milwaukee. It, it is so hard to get 20 in a college game. It's crazy to get 30, 40 is unheard of. He is on the brink of 50. From a guy who's, whose identity is a defensive player. And he was closing in on 2,000 points in his career. Who knew he was going to get them all tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, still almost 90 seconds left. And with the way UTRGB can shoot the three, still got to stay locked in if you're the Blue Jays. Well, this crowd is standing. Kalkbrenner has brought him to his feet. And the foul, a block was called on Miller. Spot. I just, I'm not sure Miller if he was in legal guarding position or not yet as you the slip out of the screen and I think that's probably the right call. Miller was moving just enough. Puts Abdul Hakim at the line. 24 points nearing his own career high. Not quite the historic level that Kalkbrenner has played tonight but a good game. Missed free throw in a spot where UTRGV needed some points, and now Ashworth will be the one at the line. The last guy you want to foul in this building. 
interesting decision to move up an intentional foul. I get it. Maybe if you don't want to allow Kalkbrenner to get a post up, and I certainly would not intentionally foul Stephen Ashworth. Well, it's two points either way, I guess. At least no time comes off the clock here. And Ashworth, 90% free throw shoot. You expect him to make both. If you're Greg McDermott and the Blue Jays, there's one. They're trying to ice this game. The challenge, though. TRGV has certainly played hard. They've oh, shot well from three. It's a talented group. Versatile. Multiple shot makers. And it's taken literal history from Kalkbrenner tonight to hold them off. Final minute. Davis trying to keep it in bounds. He does. Unable to, it was Miller who stepped down on the sideline. But how about Kalkbrenner? It's switched on to Davis. He's able to close the airspace so he can't shoot, slide his feet, and it ends in a turnover. Just an amazing sequence from a guy who's got to be gassed in Ryan Kalkbrenner. Timeout is about to be called here. Has been called. Viewing who it went out on. Timeout on the floor. Either team was charged with a timeout. It was just a really official timeout here. You can see who stepped out of bounds. That, that's such a good play from Kalkbrenner. To get switched onto a guard. Gets a hand over the ball so he can't rise up. Slide his feet. To keep everybody reminded that he's a three-time <laughs> defensive player of the year. He's just been wasting away on the offensive side tonight. 49 points for Cochran. Here he is defensively helping this play out. Let's see if that foot. Hard to tell there. The, again, the call on the floor was out of bounds. Miller with that foot right there, and he extended out of bounds. His heel come down, it's hard to tell. Up there to overturn it. Extra angles or zooming capability comes with that little mouse pad that Lamar Simpson is toying with right now. Maybe he can see something that we can. Play here because yeah. if UTRGV has possession, steal a three and stay close here. Go at it. Boy, it didn't come all the way down. So I think it's it did. Out. It's really close. What part of the foot hit what part of the floor? From those angles, it's hard for us to tell. Maybe the The call on the floor idea. stands. Called it confirmed, but he stepped out of bounds. Yeah. I think that's the right call. And now will be Creighton Ball. Cockburner is still in the game with a minute to go. Sitting on 49 points, the second most in Creighton history in a game. Well, a turnover on the inbound pass. Here's Davis trying to throw up that three. Thorne was on the other end to clean it up. Ashworth gets fouled again, so UTRGV is trying to extend this game here as they look for a wild upset. Keep in mind, there's really only two le legitimate ball handlers on the floor for the Blue Jays right now, and Neal and Ashworth. Green, more of a four. Mason Miller started at the four all year, and then Kalkbrenner a five, so against full court pressure, Creighton could struggle a little bit here handling the ball. Ashworth tonight has been perfect at the line. And he continues to be 12 out of 12. He has 20 points, which seems diminished by a 49-point effort on the other end. But you know, normally you'd be going on and on about a 20-point game, which Ashworth has tonight. Now 21. 
to get to the free throw line as much as he has is really good to see. Duel Hakeem gets blocked. It was Kalkbrenner doing it all tonight. Miller ended up down after the play. I believe another foul will send Ashworth back to the line. Well, this is the Kalkbrenner everybody knows, the three-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Great length, great anticipation, does it without fouling, his third block of the game. Puts him 103 away from the all-time Creighton record, but only Benjamin sits with that record right now. Kalkbrenner, if he just does what he did last year in terms of total number of blocks, 107, would be just enough to give him the school record. Nashua just can't miss. 15 at the free throw line tonight. Big lead for Creighton. It's extended here in the final minute, similar to what happened in the UTRGV in Lincoln. And he kept it close until the final minutes. Everybody wants Cockbrenner to get the ball here. <laughs> he has 49, and I think McDermott wants it. Well, I don't know if Cockbrenner wants it. We'll see. And a grin from Cockbrenner. Green has it taken away. And on the other end, another basket for the Vaqueros. Everyone in this building wants to see Cockbrenner get a shot at 50. Even Greg McDermott pointed to get the ball to Cockbrenner. But it seemed like Cockbrenner did not want to take you know, what would have been, I suppose, somewhat of a cheap basket here just to get to 50 points. The humility of Cockbrenner stopped him from making a push for the big 5-0. If anybody knows Ryan Cockbrenner, he is about as humble as it gets. On one hand, I, you understand that. On the other, you know, he's earned it tonight. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. if he takes a cheapie for 50, I don't think anybody's going to bat an eye. Listen to this roar. <laughs> now, one of the great games in Creighton history, and maybe one of the great games you'll see all season yes. in this sport this year. And again, needed all of them. For the two freshmen saying, teach us that. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> Gotta be pretty cool. He certainly has had a decision whether he wanted to come back, maybe try the NBA, for him to come back, and, and this is how he gets started. Talk about setting the tone. Sometimes these games early in the season can just get lost in the shuffle as these schools try to get their feet wet early in the year. Well, there will be nothing forgotten about what we saw here tonight in Omaha from Ryan Kalkbrenner. A four... <laughs> Advanced Fifty K one like fifty K something good. Ah, mama, I will pay you. Ama. Baby, baby, like a like a na, wara ka na, wara ka. Okay. Na and came naal naal ka upper nai thay idte nai kira. Ah la la. 